Hi everyone, it's Robin and welcome back to Happy at Home. Today I have another thrift store makeover video to share with you. I have four separate projects to share with you today, all of which are quick and easy to do and I hope that you'll enjoy. Today's first project starts out with these two wood frames from the thrift store. And then these two pieces of scrapbook paper that I found at Hobby Lobby. Aren't they awesome? I started out by placing the paper right side down on my work surface and then lining up my frame on top of it. Then using a pencil, I simply outlined the inside and outside edges of the frame. Then using a pair of scissors, I cut out the shape. I stopped before cutting out the inside of a shape to make sure that it fit the frame pretty well and once it was looking good to go, I then took my scissors and cut out the inside shape as well. Once again, I checked the fit. I did have a small overlap on the inside, but that'll work out just fine for what I have in mind. Next, I needed some Mod Podge, and I am using some with a satin finish and a small paintbrush. I drizzled the Mod Podge directly onto the frame and used the brush to smooth it out and evenly over the whole surface. Taking my paper, I placed it carefully on the frame, lining up all four sides, and worked on pressing and smoothing it all down evenly without any bubbles or buckles. Once that was done, I set it off to the side to let it dry and I worked on the next frame using the other piece of scrapbook paper that I found. Once the frame had time to dry completely, I wanted to work on this overlap that I had around the inside of the frame. So I took a little piece of sandpaper and lightly sanded along the edge to remove that little piece of overlapping paper. And I liked the way that it distressed the edge of the paper, so I went ahead and continued sandpapering around the whole inside edge of the frame. I repeated the process along all four outer edges as well. Then to seal the paper, I topped it with a coat of Mod Podge, applying it in the same way that I did previously. I repeated the sanding and Mod Podging steps on the second frame as well, and then set them aside to dry. The frames turned out great. I still haven't found photos for them, but they look good just sitting on the shelf empty too. I think they'll add great texture and warmth to my almost all white space. Today's second project is updating this old frame and photo mat on this gorgeous piece of cross stitch. I started by taking it all apart, removing the paper backing, bending back the wire staples, removing the cross stitch itself, then followed by the mat and the glass. I then started painting the frame, which I'm sure you have all seen a hundred times, so I won't bore you with the details, but I am using some leftover latex paint for this project. It's in a satin finish. Once I was finished painting the frame, I grabbed the photo mat itself and gave that a coat of paint as well. Have you ever done this? It is such a quick and cheap way to reuse a perfectly good photo mat that doesn't quite fit your decor. To finish off the painting process of this project, I gave both the frame and the mat another coat of paint when the first was dry. 
No painting project of mine is complete without at least a little distressing. <laughs> so I gave the frame just a little bit with some fine grit sandpaper and then dusted it all off and it was time to put the whole thing back together. After cleaning and replacing the glass, I added back the mat, followed by the cross stitch itself, and finally I bent back all the wire staples to hold it all together. The paper backing was in really good shape still, so I decided to replace that as well. Just a little bit of hot glue along all four edges of the frame did the trick. And that was it, project complete. I am so pleased with how both the frame and the photo mat turned out. It really makes this gorgeous piece of cross stitch pop out at you fantastically like I enjoy artwork to do. This project is this little table I recently found. I plan to use it as a plant stand, but first it needs a little spruce up. The tabletop itself was looking a little rough, so I used some sandpaper to smooth out the scratches and imperfections. When that was done, it was time to paint. I'll be using some leftover paint, which is a latex paint in a satin finish, and the name of it is Linen Ruffle. Using a small paintbrush, I applied a coat of paint to the whole table. I worked on the bottom side first, then I flipped it over and painted the top. I allowed the first coat to dry and then I gave the whole thing another coat for good measure. Once the second coat of paint had dried, I took some fine grit sandpaper and lightly distressed the table. Then to add some interest to the tabletop, I first used some craft paper to make a template of the top of the table. I did this by simply following along the outer groove of the table with a pencil. Once the template fit nicely, I transferred it to a piece of scrapbook paper that I wanted to use and then cut out the circle. One last double check that the circle's fit was good and I grabbed some Mod Podge and spread it all out over the top of the table with a small brush. Then, ever so carefully, I applied the paper to the table, making sure that as I smoothed it out that there were no wrinkles or bubbles, and concentrating on the edges to make sure that they were smoothed down and glued nicely. Once the first coat of Mod Podge had dried, I applied another coat on top of the paper to seal it in and use as a top coat. After allowing the final coat to dry, my table was complete. I placed the finished table out on my screen porch, which I think is the perfect place for it. I absolutely love the way it turned out, and I think the faux wood looks so cool, and the pop of pink from the geraniums is the perfect touch. Today's final project is this metal plant stand. It's in rough shape, but I think a coat of paint will make it look so much nicer. Today I'm using the Rust-Oleum's spray paint in the color Blossom White. I applied a coat of paint to the stand by spraying small bursts of paint at a time. Sort of like when you would add hairspray to your hair once it's looking fabulous. Adding small bursts of spray paint this way helps prevent running. I also tried to make sure that I applied the paint from all angles, top, bottom, and the sides for an even coverage. I allowed the first coat to dry and then I gave it a light second coat and that was it. Project complete. The finished project looks so nice out on my gravel patio. I'm not sure that it will stay here, but I made this little grouping just to show you what it turned out looking like, and I absolutely love it. The new color makes it stand out so much nicer against the background colors. 
and I'm sure it will look amazing wherever I move it out on my back patio. So that, my friends, is all four of today's projects. I sure hope you enjoyed them. I'd love to know down in the comments what you think. And if you are new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And to the rest of you, I will see you again in my next video. Bye now.